All right, it's day 312, and I still have this dual solar reflector set up, although I'm not using it for sun reflection anymore, just this LED bulb, and trying to maximize its potential. Here's a dead desiccated fungus gnat adult lying on the sand, and I think the sand barrier has served its function in preventing fungus gnats from entering to lay their eggs, but apparently I'm still getting adults somehow, so they could be coming from the potting mix on my balcony, which never dried out, or from the pot itself. I'm not sure yet. This is an overview of Sully. It's doing really well compared to everything else. Uh, Drake here, and its only shoot, is dead, or at least dead in the shoot system. I don't know what's underground. So I noticed that there's a drop of water on one of the top leaves, and I think that's just because I washed my hands, came to the living room, and shook. Well, I'm not sure because it looks like this has happened before and you can see where it's dried out there are mineral spots so that's got to be some coincidence if you look at the water tray here the water level is getting low and the debris in there is sphagnum peat moss so I might have to water again pretty soon alright it's day 319 and on my fingernail you can see a drop of fluid and that came from here so this has been a nightly occurrence you know drops of fluid appearing on the leaf tips and edges of the leaves this is actually a process known as guttation, which occurs mostly during night. And here's a viewpoint of Sully as a whole. There's a new leaf that's come out, and it's going to be much longer than the previous leaf, which is also much longer than the first five. Alright, it's morning, day 321, and I'm showing you more examples of guttation. It occurs at the leaf edges and at leaf tips. I think the tendency is it for it to occur on the highest leaves not sure why or maybe just the biggest ones before I go to bed each night I turn off this LED lamp it simulates nightfall for Sully Sully closes its stomata so no evaporation through the leaves occurs through the undersides no transpiration occurs anymore and therefore water pressure starts to build up within Sully because Sully's roots are still absorbing a lot of water the soil is too moist if the soil is dry this doesn't happen or dry enough but in this case there's still plenty of water down there within the soil of this pot and that's why I keep getting guttation every morning the droplets that are left behind are actually xylem sap it's day 323 so as you can see Sully is doing fantastic Drake not so much shoot system is completely withered and here I'm just using gloves to pick away dead fungus gnat corpses there are three of them that I've seen on the surface of the sand it's been about two weeks, so that's not really a problem, but it just goes to show that they can't get in anymore. But when you have an arrangement like this, because the bottom is wet and the sand kind of shifts around when you know it dries out and stuff, you can see some cracks in the sides. So maybe that's where they're getting in and out from. That's the shoot system of Drake. I just plucked it out. Not really plucked, you know, I just gave it the gentlest of upward tugs and there was no resistance. It just detached. I'm going to do something now that I've been really dreading this entire time. I don't want to disturb the root systems any more than they've already been disturbed in the last year. So this is kind of annoying actually because uh, I've got the camera with the tripod very close and you know some of these leaves are so long they just keep hooking on my glove. But I just want to remove this initial layer of sand above the site at which I planted Drake and see if there are any green shoots. And I realize there's a good chance that I might actually break something because, you know, this is not potting mix anymore. This will require a lot of painstaking effort. Uh, the potting mix was always sopping wet, but there are distinct chunks of little wood that you could easily, you know, partition and brush aside. This stuff is really sticky. As I once told you, you know, it's kind of a mixture of half sand, maybe 40% sphagnum peat moss for nutrition and 10% diatomaceous earth to provide clay-like qualities which is probably what's causing the stickiness. You know I had a dry layer of white diatomaceous earth right underneath the sand. I'm not seeing it. It's probably because all the water got soaked in. So you know I didn't see anything there and because it's so sticky I don't want to risk breaking anything. You know all the force would transfer and I would probably shear off any green shoots. So I'm just going to brush over that and pretend nothing ever happened. But, you know, I'm still expecting shoots to come up at some point. Then I'm going to push in some really wet 
sticky chunks of this so-called soil mixture that I created. You know, it's not ideal. Um, I probably should have just went out into the wild and dug up some of that rich Southern Californian soil, that hill soil. It's kind of reddish in color and very useful for growing almost anything and use that instead. But, you know, I don't want to do any more transplants at this point, so it is what it is. Okay, it's day 324. Just when I thought I could stop filming and publish an update, things changed again. So as you can see, this leaf, the biggest one on top, for Sully has shifted its orientation by 75 to 80 degrees. It used to be aligned along the same axis with the first six leaves. On top there you can see an eighth leaf in development, which will probably go off in a completely different direction. But what I'm really excited about is that there's a new shoot coming out here at the base near the existing shoot for Sully. A mere nine hours ago there was nothing here. So this allays my biggest fear, which was that new shoots couldn't poke their way through this sticky clay-like soil mixture and through all this sand. This thing came through just fine within a very short amount of time by ginger standards. So I think I really don't have to do anything. I don't have to transplant anything. You know, I'll just leave this stuff alone. The water tray has been dry for two weeks, but there's still a lot of guttation, which means the soil is still far too wet. So I won't need to water for a few more weeks. I don't know how many weeks that'll be, but I'll let you know when the guttation stops and I'll start counting from that day forward. So things are turning out pretty well and I expect a lot of growth. 